Hey guys, welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids. I'm here with Mark Buffa. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey everyone, uh, long time fan of the JR Pro Shop uh, guys here and their channel. And uh, basically I am the CEO of Buffa Distribution, the main supplier for all bowling products here in Canada. Also Ipsia certified master trainer, a USBC silver coach and nine time Team Canada member. 2013 world championship gold medalist and 2012 Papcon gold medalist. So. I uh, haven't been bowling much lately, but uh, you know, still very active in the business side of, uh, of bowling. Good stuff. Let's talk a little bit about some rule changes that have come into effect. We'll start with the PBA. Right. A couple different things with regards to wrist guards and to plugged balls, both of them being banned as of today, actually. Right. Um, so the, the, the wrist guards was a little bit of a surprise to me. I, it's so irrelevant, not, not to say it's irrelevant today. But it's less dominant than what we would see in the 90s. Like if you watch like a retro show, you're going to see everyone wearing, you know, a master wrist course, master. Yeah. Uh, but today a little bit less dominant. I don't know. I just, uh, I was surprised to, to see that. Obviously, if that goes into the women's tour and the senior tour. That obviously has a big th impact. Th that's going to have yeah. a really big impact. So I think the impact is going to be a little bit minimal on the national tour. Regional tour, I don't know. I don't have a chance to bowl many regionals on the East Coast. Uh, maybe mm. you would know a little bit more than that on me. But for that, that's my take on it is okay like most players are probably just shrugging at that rule change for sure the last guy i can really remember on the national tour is like mike scroggins and that's like a decade ago so right. it's kind of an irrelevant thing but i guess just to level the playing field they kind of had to do something there agreed yeah the second rule change yeah. we're going to talk about is plugged bowling balls on the pba national tour what is a plugged bowling ball Right, so when you wanna make a change to your fit or maybe you buy a hand-me-down, you're gonna to go to your pro shop, ask them to fill the holes with ball plug. And basically, that's it. So you don't know what's inside the ball plug. This used to be like a thing in back in the day where you'd fill it like with these lead pellets just to like <laughs> unbalance it a little bit more. Uh, really not a thing today. Like it's just, it's you know a little bit of, of an industry joke right now, but uh, I don't think they did that for that reason. I just think that uh, back when I was still competing in the early 2000s, there was a period where on the PBA you weren't allowed to use plug balls and you couldn't even have a ball rep coaching mm. like there was a non-coaching rule and all that stuff wow. so I just think maybe they're going back to that also leading into obviously we have a purple hammer here on the table uh, with some of the recent changes that they had this was kind of like a way for them to control some of the older urethane balls that were out there and also with the USB-C rule change from August of 2020 where right. weight holes are now banned for any competition basically so this was one way for the pba to control that and also ensure that they're using newer stuff like i am a very boisterous person when it comes to the pros need to use more current line stuff on the shows because it helps the pro shops and it helps the distributor but i also understand the athlete side of it where their job is to win no matter what and use the right tools necessary so i just kind of feel like maybe the pba was trying to squash some of that you know using six seven year old equipment right, right. for that again i'm not very active on the pba tour but i I still kind of have an insight, you know, from, from a past life. So. Of course, yeah. So with that said, uh, PBA was the first to kind of put a rule in place about uh, older urethane balls, anything over two years old, yeah. um, followed up by USBC, actually days later talking about a specific year of the Purple Hammer, 16 and 17. Let's talk about the PBA rule first. Anything older than two years for urethane balls. What yeah. are your feelings on that? And the list is pretty long. Like it they, is. they published a full list, including some international releases because of the World Series of Bowling. I'm okay with it. When I was competing, urethane wasn't really a thing. Like we didn't have, like naturals were out from, from Storm and all that type of stuff. And when I was competing on Team Canada, I was trying to hound some older stuff, you know, like a mm. Columbia Stingray or a Blue Beast or U Dots and stuff like that. So I get it, right? But now that it's readily available and there is some choice, like We've got fast pitch, pitch black, pink widows, purple hammers. Like course, you've yeah. got, you've got variety. So now that there is variety, I think okay, fine. Like maybe you can limit some of the older stuff because it is no longer needed. You might see also now in the future. You know, we see balls being released with you know reactive solid, reactive pearl, reactive hybrid. Now you might start seeing maybe a fourth or fifth counterpart with a urethane cover stock on that same core because now this is kind of like opening up that Pandora's box. Right. And you know we're starting to see it now, like with the Pink Widow. Right. So we, they have the mold, they have that core. Why not just wrap a urethane cover around it, right? Easy so yeah. again, I, I don't know anything. Like this isn't like insider information. <laughs> I'm just guesstimating right now. Okay, it just makes sense, right? Make, makes makes good business sense for the manufacturer, in my opinion. Right. 
So apart from the PBA, the USB-C also uh, changed a rule specific to 2016 and 2017 purple hammers. Right. How is that going to affect the average league bowler? The th zero, right? The 16 and 17 purples have always been under, you know, a little bit of a spotlight uh, as of lately. The fact that now they really identified it, I just think that they were going like really early in the, in the spectrum of when they were built. Yeah. Uh, because maybe they, they have seen through data that, you know, a lot of the earlier ones did get soft. So maybe it was a batch problem. More than anything, yeah. maybe not as much as a hardness thing, but more of a batch thing. The fact that they're doing that is really just going to affect national competition, you know? So if you're bowling those whole list of events, right? Like the, the, the Women's Championship, U.S. Open, uh, the Masters, the USBC Open Championships, the Queens, like, what is that? Like 10% of the, like not even 10%, 2% of the population, right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. So if ever that's the case, bring that ball with you, pack it, bring your friends' old purple hammers with yeah, you yeah. And, and do like an exchange change service because Brunswick is allowing you to switch those out for anything that's currently in the line. That's right. So if you have like a 1617 purple hammer, which was made in Hopkinsville, and the way to check that is just to look at the first digit of your serial number. If it starts with a six or a seven, then bring it with you to yeah. the open championships and get something new. Like who wouldn't want a brand new Paragon for a six year old ball that's probably just you know, somewhere in your dresser back home, right? So, <laughs> it's true. you know, like get, get something, get something new. And especially that, like at the USBC Open Championships, you're typically not using urethane, maybe at the BJ a little bit sometimes, but at the Open. Well, if you're left-handed, maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. At, anyways, on my side of the lane and at the speed I throw it, no, I'm usually throwing something stronger than that. So, <laughs> but again, you know, check with your pro shop. Uh, professional you know check out bowl.com and read the article you know that's that's exactly. really we're just here to convey a message but really like get to read your own analysis and maybe talk to your local usbc rep brunswick rep if anything if you have any questions of course yeah so we covered 2016 and 2017 models they were made in hopkinsville up until 2019 do yep. you think those newer models are going to be affected at some point by that rule change it's, i don't know right like the, these rule changes just came like super quick right. right so we never know what could happen i think that's the reason why they're asking for those balls back because they're asking to leave the ball at, at the booth at the open championships because right. i think they need some balls to do some sample testing right so as they keep getting these balls in the 16 17s are hard to get a get a hold of but maybe some of the newer stuff is still readily available because some of the pros are using them and things like that thinking out loud i just think that they're going to try to collect some data and and know and and as things progress they're just going to keep collecting more and more data and that's how we're going to get uh, get, get to uh, doing that there has been a lot of rule changes as of late including the weight holes and yep. and all of this stuff as well which is good you know i think it's some people are seeing this as a little bit of a negative but it's also something positive keep the production of the bowling equipment inside a certain box right uh, to make sure that the integrity is maintained let's see i don't know what else is going to come out of this um, but you know the rules are rules and we just we're just here we have to follow them and I'm okay with it. All right, so you talked about a bunch of different rule changes today. Are there any rules that you want to see changed personally in the game of bowling? All right, I might get some heat for this in the comments. And let us know in the comments what, what rule changes you would like to see uh, in the sport of bowling. But uh, yeah, one of the things that I would maybe revert is the, the weight hole. Mm. I always found as a master instructor for Ipsia that the weight hole was a nice adjustment that you could make for your client. Right. You need the ball to flare more, you need the ball to flare less, you need to change the motion. The weight hole became a nice tool in our arsenal, right? Yeah, 100%. So now that we lost that tool, it makes our job maybe a little bit more difficult, but just we, we kind of lose a little bit of a flaring touch there. Yeah. You know, no pun intended, flare. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's one thing that I think you can agree that it really didn't change much in terms of scoring pace no, by doing no, that. Gosh, gosh, and no. I think maybe it handcuffed certain styles of players to, to using the different types of layouts. So that would be one thing that I would maybe revisit. And it's always tough to revisit something once you make the change. But I, like, if you're asking me that question, that would probably be one that I missed today in 2022, two years in. Yeah, yeah. And, and for us as pro shop operators, we got to get it right the first time because we have one less tool that we can utilize yeah. to kind of fine tune that ball reaction. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and when I was a kid growing up, my father started a business as a pro shop in the basement. And, and that was always the one thing that baffled me as a kid was like, why is there a fourth hole in the ball? <laughs> and like, now that's that's dead and it's, it's just, 
it's something that's to me is so it's always like a mythical thing and it and mm. it's really served its purpose and it was a great thing and being one of Mo Pinnell's uh, disciples I guess if you want to say right, right. you know how big he was into weight holes he loved them you know and he <laughs> loved them and 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 when you learn to embrace it when you had learned to embrace it and really use it properly it was a really great tool yeah and and I miss him so if there was one thing that I would change I would bring that back thanks Mark appreciate your insights on that one if there are any rules that you want to see changed in the sport of bowling, let us know down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to become a member of our JR Pro Shop community, hit the join button below. Hey Barks, you forgot something. Don't forget, shop.bufabowling.com. Use the coupon code JUNGLEBARKS and get 10% off your order. Well, thanks for joining me, Mark. And uh, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.